What's up, Droners, and welcome to another Droner Dialogue. A lot of people have been texting me, hitting up the Facebook, hitting up the Instagram, and asking me about the Mavic Air. Honestly, I was like, you know, what is this Mavic Air, and what does it do, and what makes it better or worse than the Mavic, or the Spark, or the Phantom, or anything like that? So we're gonna talk through my thoughts, what it is, and if I think it's worth getting. So let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. So, everybody's been asking about this Mavic Air. I have not actually had my chance to get my hands on one yet, but the fun thing about DJI is they like to give out all the specs on their drones and let you know pretty much what it's gonna be before you get it. Now, I'll tell you guys what my initial thought was. I don't care. To be completely honest, when the, first, when the, when the uh, Mavic Air came out, I was like, I don't care. And the reason I don't care is because I own a Spark and I own a Mavic. I'm like, what could I possibly do with something that's in between? But I do see some of the added value that this Mavic Air brings to the table. But the biggest concern I had from the beginning is the biggest concern I have with the Spark. The Spark does not handle wind well at all. I've almost lost the Spark a couple times because of a really strong gust. It couldn't fight. Like even in sport mode, it's just like, nope. You know, it's like this drone was meant to be very close to you and very low to the ground for the most part because it doesn't do good in wind. And typically the higher you fly up with a drone, the more wind there is relative to how much wind there is on the ground. So that was my biggest concern with it. I was just like, is this really going to work for flying outdoors? Because that's what I would want to do. And DJI kind of sort of addressed that issue. They said that this drone is almost twice as fast as the Spark, it's almost 45 miles an hour. I mean, obviously that means that it has stronger motors. It's pretty much the exact same size, pretty much same blade tie size and everything like that. So the only thing that they could change that can make it that much faster would be that they have different motors on it that are more powerful, which means it'll be able to fight the wind better. On the DJI website, it says that it can handle up to 23 miles per hour uh, wind gusts, which is okay. Um, I know the Spark couldn't do that. The Mavic can handle more than that. I honestly have put the Mavic up in places that I shouldn't have when it comes to how much wind there was and how much there was, but I only had one scare ever with the Mavic where there was a lot of wind. I think it was about 35 to 40, 45 mile an hour wind gusts up high and the, the Mavic started just taking off, but put it in sport mode, it's good to go. Other than that, I'm like, if you don't have a Spark and you don't have a Mavic and you've already got your first like tester drone, then this is probably a good drone to get if you're not a serious professional and you just wanna do stuff for your family and pictures, and, then this is probably your drone. I mean, it, it brings things to the table that the Mavic nor the Spark actually have, like object avoidance on the front and the back. It flies for about 21 minutes, and the Mavic gets around almost 30 minutes. So it's like kinda in the middle between the two of those, but I think that's a pretty good number. If you can't get your shots in 20 something minutes, or 20 minutes, then you're probably not really flying well enough in the first place. And honestly, you're gonna have multiple batteries if you get the fly more, fly more combo, which I always recommend you get. And then it has a bunch of other like gimmicky stuff. Like it has like a 360 panorama photo thing where it kind of does like a mini world or whatever it's called, where it just looks like a circle and then it just fills in the circle with all what's with around you, it looks like the earth. Cameraman Kyle's laughing at me. What's it called, Kyle? Tiny Planet, that's it. I knew that, I knew that, I was testing Cameraman Kyle, because Cameraman Tony ain't here. But either way, Tiny Planet, it does a Tiny Planet shot. Um, it's a 12 megapixel camera, which is pretty good. Um, it actually does object avoidance in a different way. Like, I don't know how to call it something else, but you know, like the Mavic has object avoidance, the Spark has object avoidance. What it does is it's like, oh crap, there's gonna be something and it'll just stop. What this one is saying is that it's not gonna do that. It's gonna find a way to fly around it. So it's gonna say, oh, there's an object here, so I'm gonna go down here, or I'm gonna go around there. The big part of the Mavic Air is that there's a lot of flight autonomy in it. So it's going to be able to fly around stuff. It has a lot of, a lot of features when it comes to being able to do smart flights, uh, smart flight paths, and all of the above. Um, all the kind of stuff I don't really use. Um, I probably should use a little bit more when I'm just like hanging out and having fun or just like single out flying. But I spent so much time on the sticks that for me, I'm like, this machine can't fly like me. Yeah, I could see it's a robot. It's not as smooth as what I do, which I honestly believe is still true. But I'm probably gonna get my hands on one of these and see, and compare myself to the autonomous functions of this drone and see if we stand up. Because thus far, no autonomous function has been able to stand up to what I can do. Which makes me feel good, but it also makes me feel slightly threatened that at some point, the computers are gonna take over all the drone flying and I will not have that source of income anymore. But who am I? I am nobody to talk about those things. Either way, I do recommend that, that this drone is a lot more interesting than I thought. I will say that. Like after, like at first, like I said, my initial reaction wasn't to get it. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, but after like looking at the specs and looking at the footage and looking at the capabilities of this drone, if you're new, this is it. Um, I'd rather have this than the Mavic. I'd rather, I definitely would rather have this than the Spark. I don't think you can go wrong with the Mavic, but this costs less than the Mavic. You know, for the fly more combo, it's a thousand dollars. 
the Mavic up front right now is like $900 or $1,000 without the Fly More combo, it's like $1,300. So you're talking about like a three or $400 difference, but you're getting pretty much the same thing. And then we gotta look at the camera. Now this is where it gets really, really interesting. Because, you know, obviously I work with cameras. This is where cameraman Kyle and I just got into a little bit of a debate. Right, cameraman Kyle? Yeah, there it is, it's the thumbs up, okay. Either way, it has the same sensor as the Mavic. Um, but the camera looks just like the camera off of the Spark, which also looks just like the camera off the, of the Inspire 2 for the for FPV flying. It's a little tiny, like, wide one that just tilts up and down on the uh, Inspire 2. But on here, apparently, it has a three-axis gimbal. Some interesting things about how they word this three-axis gimbal. On the Mavic Pro, it says that it can do a pitch, roll, and yaw. And the Mavic Pro pissed me off anyway because it couldn't do uh, a pan, which is like turning the camera left and right like I'm doing my head right now. It couldn't do that unless you have the DJI goggles and it can do it just fine in that, which means it could have done it the whole time and DJI was holding out on it so we buy the goggles. But I will say the goggles are pretty cool um, and they're really fun to use. But I, I still don't think it should be the only way that you can do a pan on a Mavic because the camera, it, just, it doesn't make sense. It kind of upsets me. What's interesting on the Mavic Air, it says that it can do a tilt, roll, and a pan, which is like, wait, wait, what? This one can do the pan? It does the pan, but it doesn't do the yaw. Okay, cool, fine, whatever. So it has the capabilities that the Mavic Pro doesn't when it comes to that, which is the panning, which I don't know how you're gonna do that with the little controller that they have, because the controller is the same controller as the Spark it looks like. It doesn't look like it has a cord to it. It's gonna be a Wi-Fi connector from the controller to your phone or whatever device you're using to be able to see what you're doing and control all the settings. Um, which I'm pretty big fan of because the hardest part about having a Mavic Pro is to connect that little thing into the phone. But like I was saying before, camera, camera, camera. This is where it gets really, really interesting. It has the exact same size sensor as the Mavic Pro, but it has the bit rate, which is pretty much how much information it's taking in per second, that is the same as the Phantom 4 Pro. So the Phantom 4 Pro's bit rate is 100 megabits per second. The Mavic Pro's bit rate is 60, and the Mavic Air's is 100. Now, at first I got really excited about this, and then me and Cameron Kyle got into an argument because I was like, yo, this has the same bit rate as the uh, Phantom 4 Pro. That means that the footage is gonna be crazy good. And then he was like, nah, man, it doesn't even work like that. There's way more to it. And I'm like, okay, you know more than I do about cameras. And he's like, yeah, I do, because there's a lot more to it than bit rate, because it's like the sensor size. I was like, yeah, I know, the sensor size. So I was excited about the megabits per second on the camera, but there's still a lot of drawbacks. It doesn't even get close to compared to a Phantom 4 Pro. Phantom 4 Pro has the aperture control, which is the life changer. Either way, this camera, it has the same sensor, but it has a higher bit rate than the Mavic Pro, it's probably gonna actually look a little better. It's almost twice the bit rate, you know, 60 to 100. So it's just gonna look better. And that's actually cameraman Tony's biggest issue with the Mavic Pro, is that he felt that all the footage was what he called crunchy, which means that it just doesn't hold the color space that you want it to to be able to look smooth and nice. It can still look nice, you just gotta do more work to it. It's gonna look slightly better than the Mavic Pro. The megabits per second really shows you the detail. If you're looking at a tree from a distance, you'll see the leaves a lot better than it just being like a green tree. And that's pretty much the real difference. You just get more detail in the image. Other than that, they're pretty darn similar. It looks really interesting. I wanna get my hands on one. I'm gonna get my hands on one. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, hopefully I'll get to, you know, team up with one of my homies like, uh, I don't know, Kelly from Ready, Set, Drone to see what he thinks of it too. And we'll do some comparisons and have some fun. So let me know what you think and we'll talk soon.